Hi guys, this is Nico and this is the Automation Gym. While I was recording the first video, I, by the end of it, decided, hey, do you know what, it's going to be a good idea to actually run through the Python script and see what we actually did and why we did it this way, because I'm pretty sure that quite a few of you would be interested, or at least I know the question is going to be asked, so why not go through it real quick. So, um, why Python? First of all, because it's the easiest with a simplest syntax that I think is a great language, especially for beginners to learn. And especially when I'm testing something and I don't really care about time, speed, optimization and all of that. I think this is the easiest, the quickest way to really, really do it. So let's look through the code and I'm just going to explain to you what I did. So in Python, there's this great library that's called requests. Requests is using HTTP commands or HTTP requests. It's sending commands, posting commands, and it's basically using all the basic API templates that we can. Um, I'm also using basic authentication because the mini server requires it. Every single time that you go and try to connect to your mini server, what is the first thing that happens? The first thing is that it asks you for username and password, and then they come in that a small box that small box is basically using basic authentication and this is what we have it in here and i've imported time just to be able to showcase you what we can do with a little bit of delay and so on now the first information you need for yourself we have a few variables our variables are all strings which means just a text or a mix of text and integers special characters and so on we have your local url so in here you will put your um IP of the mini server, local IP. You have the serial number, same thing. Then username for the user that has access to the uh, virtual text input, password, and then the name of the virtual text input itself. In here, we also have basic authentication. I simply created um, a basic authentication request that does contain the username and password already. So you don't have to input it every single time. And then in here's where things get interesting. As I discussed in the previous video, if you simply use your remote DNS, nothing's going to happen. But if we do dns.locksoncloud.com slash 504f94a1242e is my mini server. As soon as we push it through, you see this one is going to change and is going to resolve. And this is the IP that we actually need to be able to send commands through. Now, this is exactly what's happening in here. We're sending a quick request to push the command through, and then we're getting the resolved external URL back. Now, as I also said in the previous video, every single command starts exactly the same way. It starts with def SPS IO and the name of the virtual text input. Now this in here is a string with a little bit of information, formatted string is what it is. And we can basically replace whatever's in here with the information that we've already put it uh, up here. And then I've created just a few commands. And maybe, oh, let's say I'll create one more so you can get the idea, uh, let's say, toggle a switch and that is simply going to be the command for that switch so sw tg pulse and to be super super easy for you to use it i did the following you have a local command and you have an external command with a local command we always send it on the local network and we don't need to care about the external IP, if we're online, if the mini server is offline and all that. Um, and how are you actually going to use it? It's super simple. You just say either execute local or you execute external commands. And in the brackets, you want to put that information about which command you want. Now, currently we have only these commands. Um, so let's say I want to do toggle switch and execute this one. I'm going to remove these or I'm going to just comment them out. There we go. Just so they are not active. And this is going to be the first thing executed. Also, I'm going to print the response. I'm hoping for response 200. But every now and again, it can print something else. 
So if I save this and execute, let's also have the mini server in the background to see if it goes through. Start live view in our case, go back to it. And actually I'm going to push it here. Start a script on and response to 100. Perfect. Try it again of exactly what we wanted. That was a quick one. Um, that's all the information we need. I'm going to have the script in my GitHub page and I'm going to share the link for that script so you can all download it and start messing around as much as you like. You can expand on it. You can do anything. Uh, I'm not going to say that there's any copyrights on it. It's a super simple script. Anyone can make it as, as long as you have a little bit of understanding of Python. Cheers, guys. Bye.